Alright everybody, welcome back to Subnautica. I'm recording this video immediately after the previous one. We just finished building a giant submarine. It's got a ton of storage, it's got a ton of cool stuff. Here it is. Consult manual for instructor navigation. <laughs> Yeah, lots of hatches. Probably helps with flooding everything. Decoy launcher, interesting. So what we're wanting to do, the cool thing too, is we have our Seamoth docked down below here. I'm gonna take the Seamoth into shallow water, this is back to home base. And I am going to grab the upgrade module that we actually picked up out of the, the giant ship. and get an upgrade right out of the gate. This is pretty, pretty cool. And then we're gonna have to go take this thing for a spin and see what we find out there. Probably not the best idea because I don't really know how to use it yet, but because uh, if we find something big in the deep ocean, I am a little scared. I think we left it in the home base over here. Um, yeah. There is one thing I want to check too. I think there was a way, I think we got the scan for it, to build a power cell charger. Uh, okay, here. Yes, power cell charger. There we go. Yeah, so I'm going to start installing these in all of the bases because I'm not sure if there is a way to charge this thing. It's got a lot of power, but... Yeah. Okay, it must have been in the other thing. Yeah, so we're going to try to get one of these battery chargers in every single one of ba every single base. Keep our equipment powered. They're also going to have a, pa a power cell charger in every single one of the bases so that... If this thing does start to run out of power, we can just run to a base and get a replacement real fast. I don't know why I'm in the fabricator here. Uh, let's see, there it is. Okay. So, let's run back over there. Actually, you know what? Before we get going, let's... Just like in every episode, let's get some food and water set up first so that we don't die. So it kind of sucked to be down in the bottom of the ocean and starve to death while you're inside your ship. It'd be awfully difficult to get back to your ship at that point. So. see some new wildlife around here. I'm wondering if that's a really a thing or if I'm just not seeing them before. Okay, let's grab some more water ones because if we can stock a bit of water into this thing that'll be very nice. I don't know, I don't think the food will keep, but uh Water should be fine, right? There's so many lockers in that thing. Uh, we're gonna be able to carry so much stuff back up out of the, the deep. It's gonna be really fun. There was one thing I wanted to check on is a decoy torpedo just to kind of uh, increase our odds of surviving the 
the deep. So honestly, I have no clue what we're going to find down there, so... I don't want to lose the giant submarine if we can help it, so let's see if we can do that. Okay. I guess. To get the water out of it, and then we'll. Yeah, let's kind of leave it like that. Put these waters in the in the ship. Oh, yeah, I was gonna check on that torpedo. All right, let's see. So we got a creature decoy. Might be part of it. I don't know. I don't really know where this would be. The one thing I do want to do is make a beacon just to, if we find something, you know, just drop a beacon, see if we can make two of those. Just so we can just drop and see if we can find any interesting spots. I might need to make that in the ship, I don't know. Okay. All right, let's head back over to the Cyclops and start our first adventure. You can dock this thing to the <laughs> the Cyclops. Problem with that though is I think if I la launch it down in like 300 meters, it's just immediately gonna, below th 300 meters, it's just gonna immediately explode. So gonna have to be careful with that. But there she is. See if we can figure out how to make one of these decoys. Access upgrades. Energy engine efficiency is up 300%. Always a good thing. Shield generator. Fire suppression. We did find that one. Crystalline sulfur. That's new. Kyanite. Polyaniline. Sonar upgrade. Yes, let's upgrade our sonar so we can actually see the. Oh, there we go. So we can actually see the reef back that's right in front of us. Oh, you can access the upgrades here too. Oh man, this is cool. Okay. I built things in here? I can. Oh, this is cool. This is really cool. Yeah, let's build a radio. I do just want to take this out for a spin real quick. Engine powering up. Okay. So I'm not sure if this thing stays level just constantly or not. 
or if you can tilt it at all. So we'll kind of figure that out as we go. I am able to change the depth with the uh, planet controller, so the bumpers, left bumpers up, right bumpers down. So that's pretty cool. Let's take it to Beacon 1 and see if we can just go past that. Because right between the two is the the worm monster, and I don't really want to tangle with that guy for now. Rig for silent running. That thing is not available. Okay. Start heading towards Beacon 2. This is way too shallow right here. Okay, so we can go down 500 meters. I'm guessing you could probably get a depth increase on that, but. see something big today. I don't know. Down to 500 meters. The furthest I've been able to swim, and this was pretty early on before I got the rebreather, was uh, 550. I did not return from that. And that was just the little cave system right next to Beacon 1. So going into a drop off right here, we're at 153 meters. Sonar, I don't know how big of an area this sonar covers. Which is a little disturbing. Whoa, what was that? Just got a warning there, what was that? You know what, before... We really go for it. I'm gonna go double check that there's nothing wrong with the tail of this thing. All systems online. Looks fine. No smoke or sparks or anything. Yeah. Okay. Well. Go. See, that's the thing too. Is like the HUD on this thing is so spread out, you can't really see everything at the same time. So I was looking at my my rate, my sonar. I see a warper down there. There's, I was looking at my sonar, but there was a warning right here, and because I was down here, I didn't see it because it's off my screen. I don't like that. All right, we're gonna drop it down to 200 meters and see where we're at, right there. I just saw it again, what was that? What is that? My health is still full, I'm not taking damage.
wish it wasn't nighttime right now. But again, even with even with floodlights, they don't reach very far. That's just a proximity alarm, like we're running into something or something. Does that make sense? Because there's been things like right behind me for a while. Just can't see anything. God, I hope this thing is durable. If I get attacked, then there's no way in hell I'm going to see it coming. Let's see the thermal vent. Where are we at? 322. Sand sharks down there. Seeing some thermal vents. This is definitely an area I haven't been to yet. And I'm hearing a lot of roaring in the distance. Creature attack. It's a funny warning sign. I think that was just a sand shark, which means that a sand shark did all that. What the hell is it? I just saw something. Warning, creature attack. Okay. Warning, external hull damage detected. Caution, hull integrity. God damn it, what am I doing? Landing flagged. Emergency speed. Warning. Vessel counterfeit. Excessive noise. I don't know what it was. Warning. Engine overheat. Alright, um. Warning. Engine may heat critical. A head slow. Is there a heat gauge on here? I would love to know that. Warning. Fire detected. Fire. Okay, let's get this work. Holy lord. What have we done? They said there was external hull damage. Let's take the seam off. See if we can see anything. It is still so freaking dark down here. All systems online. There it is. And there's another one. Something took a chunk out of us down here, and I could not tell what it was. Hearing something roaring too. All right, let's take it around the other side. Took out like half of our health. It's that fast. Oh yeah, here's a couple more. I 
I don't like being that blind, especially in that kind of situation, you know, where you know there's stuff down there that's trying to kill you, but you can't see or hear really any of it. Okay, so let's see if that increased the, the health. I'm assuming it did. This is the same way the... That is the same way the Seamoth works. Let's see, is that yeah, there we go. Okay. Let's put this thing back if we can. Alright. Well. We are right between beacons one and two, which means that there's probably, I mean, there definitely is the the worm monster down there. That might have been what it got us. I don't know. I thought we were down far enough to not have to worry about that, but maybe not. Maybe there's another one. Who knows? I couldn't see anything. Hmm. So let's take kind of where we were looking with the when we were when we were testing the the sea moths first first uh, depth upgrade. Let's kind of go over there. We didn't really see any Leviathan class stuff right there, so we'll see if we can just kind of test this thing out a little bit. There's a lot of. Yeah, there was. There didn't seem to be any. Uh, at least that I could tell. Any Leviathan class right there didn't hear any roaring or anything like that. Just a lot of warpers. So let's go see if we can just take this in for a test drive and then, you know, slightly safer area. Okay, so here is the air tube going down to Beacon One. Gonna kind of keep looping around this. I honestly have no clue how you're supposed to navigate caves with this thing. This is so slow and big. Too, which is a little bit frustrating, especially when you can't really see anything down there. But some you, know, you can, you're getting warnings and your hull's getting caved in, you know. Okay, let's just keep going down off of this shelf here, see what we find. I think we're in the right area. Whoa, what was that? Just jolted a little bit there. Yeah, I think that's just a... I'm guessing that's just a, a proximity alarm. For, uh, for ground. I would much rather have a topo map like the Sea Glide has than this sonar. This, this thing is 
this is useless. I don't know what that was, we didn't take any damage. Getting into those like sharks now. It's gonna keep going off in this direction. This is kind of where we were doing tests on the sea moth. Oh, you know where we are? I know where we are. We are in the wrong spot. Let's go out around this. Hopefully that guy doesn't attack us. Yeah, the last thing we want to do is get close to another worm monster, which there's another one in the tail end of the giant ship, which is where we were headed there. supposed to navigate caves with this and why why is my pitch changing right there I just I'm not doing that where are we at 200 seen a lot of sharks down here though. I haven't scanned those guys, I don't know what they're actually called, but... Oh, there's a good goal. Those things. Okay, so, take a breath. <laughs> Nosing our way down here a little bit. 322. This is about where we got attacked, the depth last time, so. Okay, real quick, I am going to kill the lights inside. And help seeing stuff out here. I really wish this HUD was just limited to my screen instead of the, the ship hull. Okay, so I'm seeing the stomps of those, uh, guys from last time. We're way below where the sea moth was able to go. God, I hope it's those walking guys. I don't know what that was.
I saw a huge quartz thing just spawn in right there. Close enough for the clear guys yet, but close. Can go another 90 meters down, but. So, just analyzing this from a game design standpoint again, if they want you to go down, I would imagine that they would make that possible and not just have giant leviathan class stuff just beating the crap out of you at every entrance because you can't kill key you can't really kill anything in this If I launched the sea moth right now, it would just implode. And it keeps going down, oh my gosh. I just saw a warper come in right there. Okay, you know what? Another thing too is the external lights are just... Am I not able to do that? Oh, okay, so it must already be done. Okay. In silent mode. Just think I'd turn on the or turn off the external lights because I don't really want to get attacked. There's a blow a bladder fish. Still nothing on sonar, but then again, there's never anything on sonar, so. guys up there. Huh. Really at a loss as to how to actually navigate some of these. Because unless the just be proximity. Because unless just the entire game is just depth and not like cave systems. I could see that, but Man, that's a big drop off. There we go. Yeah, that's just a. Man, this is a big drop off. It doesn't look like there's anything out there, but I can't really see, obviously, you know, but. Seventeens, we can still go down another eighty-three meters. I don't know if there's that much to see with that or not, but there's something on radar. Clear eel. Let's get out of here. Warning: Creeping attack. Ahead, flag 
emergency speed. Let's get back to surface. And close back Warning. to that thing as Special we can. Traffic. Excessive noise. Alright, so I think we... Overheat. Let's drop that back to normal. Alright. So, what have we learned? There's a giant drop-off right at the... what I assume is just the edge of the map. Ow. There's a giant drop-off right at what I assume is the edge of the map. On this side, at least. Okay, so... Where are we at? Yeah, we're fine. Um, let's given that, I'm guessing that we'll find the same thing. What was that? On the other side as well. This is good. We're kind of kind of learning the the bounds of what the world is, which is great. Then we can start focusing on where we should actually be going. Another thing I need to do is like find a place to actually berth this thing, because home base is too shallow. Beacon two is really far out of the way. Slightly friendlier waters. Let's let's get the repairs done. So yeah, I guess the best place to, to dock this thing would be Beacon 2. We can set up a... Which I want to do this in all the bases, obviously, yeah, but I, we can set up a, uh, a power cell charger. Or two, maybe two, I don't know. So we can uh, get this thing charged up considerably each time we come back. it would be a lot easier for us. Flanked emergency speed. Morning. Vessel counterfeit. Excessive noise. 
Well, at least we know too that this thing can surf is pretty quick, especially if you go up to emergency speed, so that's good. Well, on that side, uh, what is that? Um, so going so west by southwest ish, that kind of direction. Got about 2,000 meters out before we start to see invisible, like a giant drop off in invisible eels. So assuming that is actually like a bound for the game that's awesome um, I'd like to find that on all sides I would imagine this like just immediately after the ship the giant ship all systems but online I don't really want to go over there anymore so <laughs> yeah so the next one is either kind of just straight North and then east as well, so yeah. There she is. Alright, well, that does it for this episode. Thank you for watching as always. If you want to leave a like, comment, if you have any questions, try to try to avoid any major spoilers. I'm going into this game blind, so yeah, just leave a comment if you have any suggestions. Just places where I should build or something like that. You know, just simple stuff. And, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next, next video. Bye-bye.